We are extremely pleased that you are here. It is good to come together this way, isn't it? It is really co-creating at its best. We see you have dragged your physical bodies here. And that's good. We have not. <laughs> but we would like you to know that there are many, 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 many more of us than there are of you. Each of you has an inner being who is present. And every one of your inner beings has a whole lot of partners in crime. We are all focused for the purpose of, for you, maybe coming into a new awareness, for us just celebrating the perfection of all of it, the blending of the non-physical and the physical is possible in every moment of your day, but more likely in a situation like this. You were source energy before you came into this physical body and a part of that consciousness is what you think of as you, but never in any moment in time are you focused without your inner being's focus right there with you. And the way you feel in any present moment now, 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 the way you feel is the way the energy of your inner being and the energy of you, meaning the focus, the attention, whatever you've got going on, is the way it blends or doesn't blend. In other words, when you are in sync with your inner being, your emotions, which are your manifestation of that blend of vibration, your emotion feels wonderful and the closer to alignment you are the better you feel and the more not in alignment the worse you feel you are extensions of source energy who can never be separated from your inner being but you can pinch yourself off pretty good and you feel it when it happens yeah so we know that even though this is for many of you your first gathering like this we know that you're on to us you know that we're relentless about our encouragement for you to figure out what your point of attraction is what your point of attraction is because there's nothing else that is the reason that anything else is ever happening to you nothing comes to you because somebody else sent it to you there's no assertion this is a traction based universe but what makes so many humans not understand that is that often they're focused clearly on something that they do not want and they are shouting with volume or mentally go away from me not realizing that that is an invitation for unwanted because you invite through your attention so as we are moving forward here today we want to get your attention about that and we want to talk about anything that matters to you that really is absolutely what this is all about this gathering gathered in a vibrational version before you actually came together in this room and so many of you will feel an inspiration to tap in at certain times you're going to notice a perfect unfolding and whether you get into the seat or not which really when you look at the numbers of the room and you understand the amount of time that we will spend together is not likely that you're going to get into this seat and ask your questions openly to us but it is a hundred percent likely that you will hear your answer because you've already asked it and we've already heard it and the thing about your inner beings that we want you to focus on it's a good time to do it here now is that your inner being knows where you are right now in relationship to everything that you desire and your inner being is offering you a vibrational path of least resistance or better said most allowance 
Most allowance to what? Most allowance to the whole of who you are. And what's the whole of who you are? That's that part of you that is evolved beyond what you've let in so far. And by saying what you've let in so far, we mean because of your physicalness, what you have allowed yourself to manifest in terms of see it, hear it, smell it, taste it, touch it. In other words, we want to talk to you. You're ready for it. We can feel the power of your asking. You're ready for a conversation about turning thoughts to things. In fact, you are doing that all day, every day, but you don't want to take credit for the thoughts you turn to things that are things that you don't like. You want to blame that on somebody else, but you are turning thoughts to things. And there are so many thoughts to be turned to things. And we want you to feel it's something that is sort of in scarce supply sometimes in your humanness. What we're getting at here is when you are called to something rather than pushed to something, then it feels good. That's what the feeling of freedom feels like doing what I've chosen to do. Well, you feel that the universe or your husband or your children or somebody's assigned all this stuff to you. So you don't feel called to it. It doesn't feel like you're inspired to it. It feels like you're assigned to it. It feels like you're a slave to it. And you want to turn that around, not just so that you can win in the sense of feeling good, but so that you can teach that to those around you. It feels really good to be able to follow your whim. This seems meaningless, but we're going to tell it to you anyway, because it's these things that make Esther feel like the universe has her back about things that matter and things that don't matter. So she put her eyelashes on. Now, friends, it's a technique. The glue has to just be tacky enough because if the glue's not tacky enough, it gets all over your face, you know, and it doesn't stay where you're going to put it. And she's got some eyelashes. Can you see her eyelashes? And, and she likes these eyelashes because they make her eyes a little more open. And she realizes she bends them a little bit. And in other words, she's sort of perfected that technique. And so she's doing her eyelashes and she sets her timer. The glue needs to cure for exactly three minutes before she goes, mm, because if she does it later than that, it's too dried. And if she does it before that, her eyelashes move all over her face. We know this is important. We hope you're taking notes. So she got her eyelashes on and they look great. And she's feeling good and she was doing other things. And then for no reason, she laughed while it was happening. She went into the bathroom to check her eyelashes. Now she doesn't do that. And one of them looked extra perky. <laughs> and she thought, are you loose? And she touched it and it fell right off. Fell right off. And she thought, that would not have been fun on the stage. <laughs> First time that's ever happened. What we're getting at is when you start delegating to the universe, when you start feeling free and happy about what you're doing, when you stop feeling like a martyr and a victim, all kinds of resources swoop in and help you in a sort of awarenessing way. Esther cannot explain to you what in that technique made that different. Why was that different? It makes no sense to her. The other one, just fine. This one fell right off. What's the deal with that? Doesn't matter. What matters is that something that she wanted was brought to her attention so she could do something about it. And she didn't say, damn glue. She didn't say, damn eyelash. She didn't say, stupid Esther. She said, well, wasn't that funny? Isn't that interesting? Isn't that nice that the universe has my back on something that matters only to me? Her eyelashes could fall off. We know that you don't care. She doesn't want her eyelashes to fall off when she's on the stage. So we know this is really reaching you at deep levels. <laughs> But the reason that we're telling you something that is insignificant like this is because the universe is helping you out in countless ways all day long. But the sorrier you feel for yourself, the more you feel like you're doing more than your fair share, then the less help you get. And that just seems contradictory. It seems like if I complain to my mama, then she'll step up and she'll help me out. It seems like the more I am protesting the plight of my life experience, then the more help I should get. Well, maybe humans would step in, but when you're soliciting humans to step in, it's a paltry little untalented crowd that steps forth. When you are letting the universe step in, your timing is great, your impulses are great, your right place, right time is great. That's when you really begin to feel your power. 
You don't get your power from making a list of things to do and then doing it. That's not where your empowerment comes from. It's where you get your stuff done. You want to get your stuff done, but your empowerment comes from delegating and trusting and then watching the evidence. That's how you begin to feel invincible and blessed and loved and seen and taken care of. And that's what you want to teach your kids. You don't go to school with your kids and you're not always going to be the provider of their food. You want them to know that whatever they want and whatever they need will come to them, leaving you out of the equation. Otherwise you've got dependency, 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 dependency that just bogs you down. So you got to fight for your own independence before you can ever begin to bestow any independence to another. And you don't do it begrudgingly. You don't say, oh, I've got so much to do. You're going to have to get your own breakfast. You say, hey, I had a really strong inspiration. My inspiration is that you kids can get your breakfast and I'll do your lunch. You get your breakfast and I'll do your lunch. You get your breakfast and I'll do your lunch. But mom, you get your breakfast and I'll do your lunch. That way you can get whatever you want. That's how you get good at it. You get your breakfast and I'll get your lunch. And we know it sounds trivial. It sounds maybe even petty. It maybe even sounds like a tug of war. But this is the thing that we really want you to hear. If you're not lined up with this, it won't go well. If you feel guilty about it, your marbles will be saying, I know I should be doing this because I'm your mother and I've always done it and I don't expect you to do it. And I know that you've got a lot of things on your mind and I don't want you to have a hard time and I'll take care of everything. If that's what's in your bag of marbles, then everybody dumps everything on your plate. Be the most responsible person that anybody knows and they'll call you when they move. They'll call you when they need a favor. They're always going to call you. And at first it feels pretty good to you. Ooh, I'm really a popular person. But after you've got so many people depending on you, doing things that they really want to do for themselves, friends, we don't want to disillusion you with people. But when you do people a favor, they only appreciate it a little bit. And mostly they want their own self-empowerment. You just do. You want your own self-empowerment. Where are you? You don't look like you want your own self-empowerment. Do you really want others to do stuff for you? Do you want others to do stuff for you? Do you want the universe to respond to your clear intention? Because if this is a game where you're just moving stuff around, then it's a game where who's the strongest, who's the most ready, willing, and able, who moves stuff around. And we promise you, friend, that group of people that are moving the most stuff around are resentful that they're the ones moving this stuff around. They don't want to be the ones doing the stuff that you don't want to do. Nobody wants to be the ones doing the stuff. Everybody wants to be the ones that are doing the stuff that they're inspired to do. So you want to show yourself how much the universe can take care of. And it is an awesome, large amount of things that the universe can take care of. That first day that Esther did it, so many people called her that had formerly been on her list to try to get hold of, and she'd been zigging and zagging and hadn't been able to hook up with them. Several of them called. The universe got more done that first day than Esther did. It got her attention. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next